Hey guys, welcome back to part three of experimental design. We are going to talk about the data table, aka the qual quantitative analysis, observations, whatever, the graph, and statistics today. Uh, lots of mathy start. Okay, so here we go. Quantitative data is the data table, and the new this year is that they require all the raw data to be provided as well. Um, and then condensed data, they will also, um, the, the, the final data that you're going to graph um, has to be only the part that is going to be graph. Um, anyhow, so this is gonna be a little interesting and this is kind of different from what we have done in the past few years, but um, either way, uh, the kind of the core method to making, uh, nailing this part is still pretty straightforward. So um, the raw data, meaning um, the data that you actually took the measurements from. For example, let's say uh, your X value is temperature change. So for raw data, you have to provide both your initial temperature and your final temperature. And then you also need to provide um, after the calculation, so actual the temperature change that you are going to graph um, in the data table. So. Uh, please watch for significant figures and units. Always remember to put a title um, and then bring a ruler to draw the frame of the data table so that it looks pretty um, and minimize our unnecessary points that it can be taken off. Okay, here is our template that we have been using for the past couple of years. Um, we have the control, level one, two, and three. Um, and then on the left, you need to write your X variable. And then on... Um, on the top, you gotta say your measurement or your y values for trials one, two, and three with initial and final values if you're taking, say, the change of something or however you wanna do it with your raw data. Just make it into a nice table, make equal lengths in the column or widths, however you call it, um, and then put it for trials one, two, and three. Um, yeah, and then the final data table, I don't think we need trials one, two, and three anymore unless you want to graph all 12 points with the average, so that gives you 15 points. But always remember also the title, I have forgot to mention that. But make another table for the things that you are going to graph. Um, use control levels one, two, three, and then trials one, two, and three, and also your average. This is the neat data table um, per se. And then also provide your sample calculation, specify which level and which trial you're taking it from. For example, if you want to say, oh, uh, there's a temperature change, temperature change of five degrees. Um, I see in level one, trial one, you say for level one, comma, trial one, provide your calculations. Oh, 10 uh, degrees minus 15 degrees is negative five degrees, and that's my change, or something like that. Okay. That's your data table. We will practice how to write it out, how to make it neat um, at the practice on Wednesday. And then statistics. Um, so they also added something new this year. It's the uh, central tendency, but uh, the, 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 sta uh, the statistics of variation actually, maximum, minimum, and standard deviation are the new ones. And this is also something that you need to um, know how to make it neat for. So here's another template for another table, another table for your statistics. Always include the title, the effect of blah on your blah with units, and then include mean, median, mode for your control level one, level two, and level three, oh, and also range. So these, these four actually are kind of pretty easy for you to, to figure out, even just eyeballing the data table, all right? So the mean is going to be the average, the median, so for levels one, two, and three, is gonna be the second biggest, or the second smallest, however you call it, kind of the middle child of the data, data set within uh, the three trials of one level. And then the mode is the one data, one exact value that appears the most times or the most frequently, usually, um, I'm not exactly sure actually how this mode thing is going to work for this time because it's never been in there. And then the range 
is the value when you subtract the smallest from your level from the biggest. So like the difference between the maximum and minimum. And then line of best fit. So this is something you're going to do on your calculator. Um, uh, I will do another video on that. Standard deviation also and maxes and mins. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you can just, yeah, just um, eyeball it or you can also go to your calculator for that. And then we're going to talk about graph um, and sig figs. Let's talk about sig figs first. So um, if you have taken honors physics, you will know how to operate the significant figures. Uh, the, the least number of decimals after the decimal point for subtraction and addition, and then the least number of um, significant pig figures, as in like number of sig figs, um, when you're doing multiplication and division. If you have any further questions on how to operate these, just ask me in person. That'll be a little better because um, it's kind of complicated to explain in a video. And then for the graph, usually we leave this section to the last so that you don't spend too much time on it. Um, and then, yeah, evenly space out your points, just be neat. And then watching out, you should also watch out for sig figs on your labels for, for the graph as well. So here's a little template of your, of your graph. Also, always, always, always remember the title, the effect of blah on blah. And then they usually give you the little grid. And then here's what you're going to do. You are, um, from past cases, we, we usually only plot the average of each level. So average of control is one dot, and then average of level one, average of level two, average of level three. And then uh, you are going to create a legend, um, use different weird shapes, whatever you come up with, to denote different levels. Uh, we usually just use a dot for average and then just weird circles, triangles, whatever, to show, oh, this is level one, level two, and level three. Um, and then you draw a line crossing at best all the points for your line of best fit. On the y-axis, you're going to label it with units, and also on the x-axis, space it out evenly and nicely. Um, if they have, like, say, 25 grids and you have one through five, just put, like, each value with increments of one on five little boxes. Um, Shouldn't be the hardest job. That's why you should save time on it. Uh, yeah, this should be fairly straightforward. And all the calculations, if you have time in the first 20 minutes, should be done. So all the job you have to do is to, once the cap packet comes down for, the, uh, for part two, you are just going to copy and paste that in a more neat fashion um, onto the paper to be, gra uh, to be graded. So... That are, these are the three sections we're going to talk about and practice uh, on Wednesday. And um, as usual, if you have any questions, just let me know. And yeah, thanks.